Good evening. Welcome one. Welcome all to the Fringe Vintage Superhero Event. Oh, yes. Tonight you will be privileged to be introduced to such luminaries as the League possesses. Titans, all of them. Watch in admiration and hopefully go out into the world and emulate them as superheroes in your own day-to-day -day lives. I do hope all of you are planning to get backstories ready. Backstories are all important for heroes, despite their deeds. Nobody would think Superman was quite such a hero if, despite his impressive record, it turned out he hadn't got his powers from the sun, come from a dying world. What if, oh I don't know, he'd played in some magical dog shit instead? We wouldn't think quite so much of him. Or perhaps Bruce Wayne got his fortune from masturbating on camera. It wouldn't be the same. Batman wouldn't have that same aura about him, would he? Go on, Bruce. That's the money shot. No, no, no. It doesn't even thinking about it. I'm an origin story myself, of course. Like all true heroes, I wasn't born, I was made. As DVDs became more popular, more and more VHS tapes were thrown out. A sad day. They lay piled up in landfills, their insectile bodies glinting in the sun. And it was one of these pits that was to become the crucible of my creation. My mother, though I could not know it then, was a lorry driver, a good sturdy lass. She drove trucks of nuclear waste for safe disposal. One day, tragically, she lost control and careered into the landfill, which was full of action movie films, by the way, I should add. They all mixed together, the unborn fetus, the radioactive waste, which, as we know, gives you superpowers. Doesn't have any negative effects, all those children from Hiroshima with extra limbs and two faces. Heroes all! And I won't hear a word otherwise. And so it was that I was created, although I never knew my mother. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't fully grown though, however. I was still juvenile, had to go to the orphanage for a time. I didn't have my place in the world. I was no Bruce Wayne, I didn't have an Alfred to guide me. But there were signs. When one of the bigger boys in the orphanage tried to take my sweets, a bitch slipped him. So hard, all his teeth came out and embedded in the wall and spelled out, you're gonna go far, kid. Thank you. Now, I don't like to brag. <laughs> no, who am I kidding? But I mean, I've done many heroic things, and among them was vanquishing the aquafibians of wicked King Titan. Stingray was there, Stingray! But they didn't help much, I'm not gonna lie. It was mostly me. However, as their city lay in ruins and the wages of sin had been paid, I found myself getting a bit horny. But what's a man to do? I was far underwater, searched and searched, until I copulated with a willing shark. Many times, I should say. And she fell pregnant. Now, I wanted to do the right thing. Because even heroes dream of settling down, a wife, children, a happy home. But this wasn't to be my happy ending, as you shall see. Her name was Tracy, and we spent many happy months together. I would pick bits of masticated flesh out from between her razor-sharp serrated teeth, and as we lay together in the current, I'd feel her belly grow. Unfortunately, when the happy day came, it was a nightmare. She gave birth to a pup of titanic proportions and an evil nature. His first victim was his mother as he tore his way free and vanished into the depths as I cradled her in my arms, holding her fin as she slipped away. I got one, I suppose I'll have to make do with that. I tracked him down, the misbegotten wretch. I wished he weren't my son, but he were, and I found him terrorising a small seaside resort, devouring swimmers just to hear the noises they made underwater. If it sounds familiar, it's because these true events, with inspiration for the film Jaws, obviously I had to be taken out of it because the world doesn't know about the League of Superheroes. They replaced me with the fictional character of Chief Brody, but it was, of course, I who wrestled that child to the ocean floor and suffocated him. Who's screaming over there? Put your hands up for me, please. Super. That is absolutely super. That is something I wanted to talk to all of you about. Now, I'm out down here in Romford, your culture vultures. You're usually found at the opera or the theatre or some such thing. And you wouldn't lower yourselves to something like burlesque. So maybe you don't know how to behave, and that's okay. When you see something tantalising. That's it. And sometimes you might want to give it a whistle. 
super duper. Shall we have a quick go? Shall we split the room a little bit? The left, are you ready? Oh, you make me feel sexy. And the right side, let's see if you can do better than that. Go! You'll never forget that, no matter how hard you try. Now that we've got that established, what's the deal with Terry Wogan? The guy's voice is so relaxing, it's almost disturbing. You know, I reckon Terry Wogan's voice would make you feel safe and warm and relaxed even if you were on fire. I mean, admittedly, you'd feel warm if you were on fire anyway. But it's not really relaxing, is it? I doubt those Buddhist monks who set themselves alight to protest against China think, wow, this is comfy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're nearly there. We're nearly at the final act of the night. Our headliner, Genie Wishes. And I was going to play... Yeah, woo! I was going to play, quickly, a superhero name game using the Encyclopedia of Unusual Sex Practices. Would you like to have a go at that, or would you like to see her now? Do you want, let's try screaming. Do you want the Encyclopedia? Do you want Genie? Yeah. All's about equal. Genie? 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 She's here! Our headline of the gorgeous, the blonde bombshell, Jeannie wishes as Poison Ivy. Woo! 